Let's tackle the music industry for a second here on the morning show with Anthony. I love this uh, 88 p- 88 page report. And unlike in high school, I actually read most of this one uh, because I find these numbers and what's happening in the world right now absolutely fascinating. Technology, uh, the Internet is is equalizing and changing everything. And we're going to see certain things. And I like being right about stuff. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what it is about me, but I like being right about stuff. So I want to say it, have it on record uh, so that in three, four, five years when this is the norm, you can be like, that little pudgy Italian guy had it right. You know what I'm saying? That's what, that's kind of where... I mean, I prefer if you said Anthony had it right, but I, realistic. 88-page um, report from City uh, Group on what the solutions could be and what the issues are in the music industry. Here's what's... And I'm going to throw a couple of things at you, a couple of points that are really interesting. The first being that revenues in the music industry are peaking right now believe it or not i know everybody's doom and gloom very glum and this and that and um again the sort of the national attitude or the 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 vibe is incorrect from what is actually happening we see that a bunch of times in this little report here uh but according to this report the music industry made 43 billion dollars produced 43 billion dollars in revenue in 2017 Uh, despite the fact that artists aren't getting paid nearly what they probably should be, their percentage of revenue is actually up. So back in 2000, 7%, God, that's low, 7% of musicians, uh, 7% of the revenue went to musicians. Now it's 12%. So nice little jump there. But it's still... I mean, the people, the, the, the steak, right? The pork chop, the, the, the uh, filet of soul, the main course, the dish, the, 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 the essential item to this pie, the musicians, they're only getting 12% of the $43 billion in revenue. Now, I don't know about you, but that's not how you operate a business. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just not how it works. It's not a great business model. The music business never, ever was. Too many middlemen, right? Too many middlemen. Uh, But I think we're going to see massive changes in that. I look at the NHL and what they did. If you look at the National Hockey League, they were one of the first to implement a salary cap in their league, right? But underneath that salary cap came revenue sharing between the players and the teams. They get roughly 50%. Teams get to keep 50% of the revenue. Players in their salaries get to keep 50% of the revenue. They have certain things, you know, uh, you know, certain physics and, and, and things in place to make sure that it all kind of ends out at the end of the day. And then they go back and they analyze their business. And as if it turns out that the teams made more than what the players made, then the teams pay out out of this fund that they both put money into to make sure it all evens out at the end of the day. That's a good business model. They made sure that their product was taken care of, right? The music industry, it doesn't have a union. It's not like players. It's a little bit different. There's a lot more musicians than there are professional hockey league players. They're not going to be able to get that done, but you've got to get to a better place than 12% because that's not how you succeed. It's just not a good business model overall. You can't have the main driving force only getting 12%. By the way, if you read this 88-page report, you'll find out that a lot of that does come from touring. That is a, uh, you know, sort of vibe or feeling that is actually true. The reason why revenues are up so much is because of the increased touring. Bands are making more money out on the road. There are more shows. You look at Long Island. There's never been more venues, indoor or outdoor, than there are right now. There's never been more music festivals in the area. Um, it's an explosive time. People are making money and it's going to continue. By the way, we, the public, we're spending more money. We are consuming more music. We're going and experiencing more things live. And maybe that's because we're not shelling out $20 for a CD anymore or $30 for an album. We got that extra $85 at the end of the month to go and see a show instead. I don't know what it is. But that's just a, a case of what the issues are. That's what's happening. We are going to see, we are consuming more music. We're not paying for CDs 
uh, and the likes as much. Here's another thing that I want to put out there because I, I feel like, like, again, what the vibe is is one thing and what is actually happening is something else. What do you hear in the world? Radio's dead, right? Radio stinks. Radio this, radio that. Radio is still more responsible for music consumption than anything else. Anything else. By the way, if you add everything else that everybody said was going to kill radio, Sirius, Pandora, Spotify, right? Stream. If you add it all up, it still doesn't equal the power of what radio does. Regular terrestrial AM FM radio. Still the most powerful driving force in the music industry. People are still listening to regular radio more than anything else combined. I know it sounds impossible. The serious numbers are impressive. I'm not denying that. The Spotify numbers are impressive. Not denying that. But they're not pulling away from regular radio. What Spotify has done has eroded away from the time that you spend listening to a CD or an MP3 that you bought or a vinyl record, much to the chagrin of a lot of audiophiles. So that number has been affected. Radio listening has not. It's unbelievable how good the radio numbers are, believe it or not. Again, you put all the other things together and it still doesn't match the, the reach and the power that radio has. Um, so that's an important thing. So what's the issue here? Middlemen, record labels, that's the issue. A big draw from all of this is the way this industry has run itself, which, let's be honest with each other, has been just awful, just terrible. A&R, lawyers, managers, publishing, right? All these marketing, promotions, all these different areas of what a record label does and provides just drains the money out of the mix. It's why artists have to go out on the road and that's why we've seen an increase in revenue that way because, you know, the labels don't see any of the road money. I mean, your management does and your lawyer does if, for an artist, but outside of that, nobody, a &R, none of that gets touched by any of the record labels. Record labels continue to be their own worst enemy. And I know we got a lot of record label people that listen to EHM. They're not going to be happy to hear this, but that part of the industry is what needs to be cleaned up because there's far too many middlemen. The good news, musicians, um, is that the internet has eliminated the middleman. We've seen this a bunch already, and we're going to continue to see it. And although at first the internet was bad, i.e. Napster, so on and so forth, the smartphone has been a godsend for the music industry the convenience of the matter has really taken the ability of stealing music out of the equation. People, rather than sitting there downloading stuff and, and making mixes and, you know, oh, that's a bad copy or this, right? Remember the old Napster days? Oh, this has a big screech in it, all that kind of stuff. That's gone. You mean I could pay nine bucks and then I just, it's on my phone. That has eliminated a lot of the illegal streams that are out there. Um, and what's happened is more people are consuming music through their smartphones than ever before. And again, it hasn't affected your radio listening. It's affected your CD listening uh, or your MP3 or whatever the case. So we've seen that change come about. But the smartphone has also made it easier to discover artists. And that's where the hope comes in for musicians. If you're a musician, this is the greatest time, period, end of sentence, to be making music. You might be able to make the argument that the 50s were kind of there because it was exploding so big and, and artists were just being fabricated because there was so much money to be made. But technology and everything else has made it so easy to become discovered right now. So easy. You can put your stuff on Spotify. You can put your stuff on SoundCloud. And somebody can come across and discover it. And that is why I have hope for the future of the music industry. Now, people will read this 88-page report from Citigroup and be like, oh, no, things are going to crash. No, things are going to crash for the record labels. Things are not going to crash for the music business. Artists are going to be better off five years from now than they are today. 
I think 12% goes way up because of SoundCloud, Spotify, so on. That direct distribution, your website, whatever the case is, Apple Music, it doesn't even matter what it is. Apple, Spotify, it doesn't matter. Apple, Spotify can go tomorrow. It doesn't matter. Direct to consumer is where the internet is and smartphones are taking, you know, internet 2.0 and smartphones are taking our world. And that's what's important for creators. Whether you're a filmmaker or a radio person or a musician, creators can go directly to people now. And that's what makes a difference. That's why everybody's going to be okay. Little asterisk, though, we are probably headed for a huge economic meltdown at some point over the next two or three years. And that will obviously be a massive setback. So just putting that out there. I'm no economist, but I do know every eight to 10 to 12 years, thing kind of goes in the toilet for a couple of years. Uh, market corrections or whatever you want to call it. But, uh, you know, it's been uh, nine since we had the last one, and that was a big one. I just feel like that one's coming. And then people aren't going to go out and spend money at shows, so I think the industry is going to suffer a bit because of that. But again, overall trajectory, I just see this thing going through the roof for artists because they can go directly to consumer, which they never had before. If you wanted to get discovered, you had to go through the 30 layers of a record label. Now, if you want to get discovered, just write a really good song and put it out there and people will share it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Spotify, whatever it is, it will make its way across if it's meant to be. And if you work hard at it and if you go out and tour and push it, you got to put the work in. It's not any easier. In fact, it's more difficult. But you know what you get at the end of the day, you get a little bit more uh, on your end for the effort. And the other thing we do have to look out for is depression. I honestly think this is an issue. It's not something that's overly tackled in this 88-page uh, report from Citigroup. But uh, artists going out on the road, the road is no way to live. The road is no way to live. And because artists are touring so much more, I do believe that affects their psyche. You know, I mean, you can't point to anything specifically, but, you know, like Demi Lovato and you look at uh, uh, Anthony Bourdain and... You know, you look at some of these situations and some artists that have come out and said, you know, there's artists that are out there that are speaking openly against this. The guy from Passion Pit, uh, you know, ha has been speaking a lot lately. What's his name? Angel Michael Angelikos has been speaking a lot lately on the dangers of the music industry and touring relentlessly and how that can have a drag on a person's, you know, psyche. So that's another little thing you got to look you got to look out for. But again, as internet 2.0, smartphones, social media, I think sort of starts to even the balance a little bit. I think things will improve for musicians for sure.